Mark, set, go. Can't see it. Right between the red flags, dutical. Mag, you got it in your pocket, bro. Here, give me that one. Wailed on it. <laughs> Dr. Heckle, Sig 522. What do you think, Holmes? What do you think? I think it rules. That thing's bad, dude. It rules. It's one of the best tactical 22 rifles made as Budget, of 2010. junk, ammo. It's the worst ammo. Well, not the worst, but that's definitely yeah, a low yeah, grade yeah, ammo. Yeah, 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 definitely. And it's just rolling. Rolling. Look at the barrel profile, love it. The handguard's awesome, you can light it up, put it on a rail there. Yeah. Run an Adco on Alpha the 30 on it. Yep. Do your foregrip if you want, you know. Those Black Dog magazines are outstanding, they're reliable. Nice, man. Dudes, I love opening my reviews with some of the shooting we've accomplished in the Nut and Fancy Project. Both myself and my friends in the Nut and Fancy Project, I call them crew members as we test run and gun style, sometimes target style. Lots of different guns. Nice. This is one of them, the Sig Sauer 522. Yeah. And I've done a fair amount of shooting on this gun, putting it kind of at the top of my testing list so I can get back to you as quickly as I can on what I think is probably one of the finest, that's right, finest tactical 22s available, at least as of 2010, nice. 2010, the early portion. There's probably going to be some more designs coming out. There are already some excellent designs out there that offer you some other choices. I may mention those, make reference to them. But the SIG 522, just like I said in the booth re review at Las Vegas in the SIG booth with Eric Von Bossi, their rep, is outstanding. There's a lot of great things about this gun that you will dig. I'm gonna to try to cover them. Nut and fancy tabletop style like I always do via the talking points. Should go quicker than normal because I'll, this is actually a fairly simple design. It's a new design. There's not a lot of history to discuss. We'll say that here in just a second. And this will be one of a more organized, what I'm gonna call tactical 22 carbine review. Yes, there will be others rolled, on, rolled in on tabletop. I may mention one or two more designs as we go for comparison and contrast against the 522. It is an outstanding gun though. If you are thinking about a recreational, uh, and that, instead of talking about history and track record, because it really isn't history and track record, let's just jump in the talking points, dudes. Uh, because it's a brand new design. It mimics a SIG 550 series, 550, 551. I've always thought that's a cool assault rifle. Uh, you know, in semi-automatic sporting arm in its semi-auto configuration, uh, loved it. I uh, always thought it had a short length of pull for myself, but the ergonomics, which we'll discuss here in a little bit, superior. This is what this gun mimics, but it is a brand new animal since it, it's its own gun. The mechanism, the receiver, how it's put together, all new. As such, there really is no history to discuss on the SIG 522. So we'll talk about POU. Uh, not sure why I didn't include that in talking point, I should. Philosophy of use. Recreational. That is the first thing I would say that a SIG 522 could serve its user as. Fun. Just going out and shooting for fun, for recreation, friends, family, getting out there, running and gunning, as you've seen many times in the Nut and Fancy Project with my buddies. What a great way to spend a Saturday afternoon. Fun and memorable and it won't break the bank because you're not shooting center fire, you're shooting 22. Uh, and when we get to reliability, even gets better with the SIG 522. Um, but recreationally, it is probably one of the funnest 22 rifles I've fired. 
and yes, I fired a lot, especially now with TMP. I test all kinds of guns. So many are fun, but this will stack against the funnest of them, and that is a primary POU for this. Secondarily, a tactical training tool. A discussion could be made here, well, is a SIG 5.56, you know, the current offering from SIG or any of their other centerfire carbine rifles, part of your tactical system, whether you're a law enforcement officer, civilian sheepdog, military dude, I don't know. I would say, in all likelihood, probably not. Um, so you need to determine whether the ergonomics, which we will discuss on the 522, are going to be adequate for you. They are different than an AR-15, although in some respects similar. So is it the best training tool for you and the gun that you normally shoot in your duty or defensive uses? I don't know. Could be, though. Um, it does have a different battery of arms. We may discuss as we go. But nice, overall, dude. I think just nice. for trigger what? time, and I've always said yeah, trigger fun. time is Look trigger time. Get shows. out there and shoot. Um, I think the 522 would serve your pur purposes extremely well. That's POU. On to value. How is it? Well, um, I will say excellent for what it is. Uh, most of these tactical 22s, and I will talk about that later on, the whole concept as I see it, that is nothing fancy sees it, later on. But as a tactical 22, I think it offers good value. Most of them are coming in around the five to six hundred dollar price point, which I do think is a little bit pricey, maybe a lot pricey, depending on your point of point of view. But this is a Sig 522LR Classic or 522 Classic, and it currently lists subject to change. I always say that because don't hold me to it because the manufacturer may change, may you know raise lower prices. 572 retail. Street price, maybe the high fours is what you'll score this for, 475 a 522 And I will say for what you're getting, it's worth it. It's worth it. Maybe will come in lesser than some other alternatives, namely the Colt Tactical 22 made by Carl Walther, imported by Umarex. That's going to retail around $600. Okay, and then the Smith & Wesson M&P 1522 coming in different versions for 2010 as I showed you or will show you in my SHOT Show booth review with Smith & Wesson. That's going to be around the same price, around $600, but uh, street price maybe around five-ish or so. Just depends on the model you get. Uh, good value though for what you're getting. One is cool factor, dudes. Okay, uh, I love 1022s. I love Marlins. I love. I'm just a 22 addict. I'll say that. You've heard me say it. All kinds of 22s. I just love it. They're fun. They're affordable to shoot. You don't feel feel guilty after going out and sending about a thousand or so rounds down range. Uh, I mean, what more can you say? The 15, the 522 is the same way. But it gives you cool factor. It gives you a cool looking gun that is impressive. It looks like a full size 556 classic, doesn't it? You know, our center fire one. Everybody that sees it will think that. It mimics it perfectly, even down to the fake gas adjustment on the top. This is actually a piece of plastic, a plastic plug, just like we talked about in Shot Show Review. You can put your M&Ms in there if you want. Wouldn't recommend that. That's cool. I like that. I mean, some guys say that's stupid. No, it's not stupid. It mimics the look of the centerfire SIG, and I think that's excellent. So some of what you're paying for is that cool factor uh, and the just the intrinsic enjoyment you will have of owning a gun that shoots. It's not an airsoft rifle. This is a functional rifle, but it also looks just like the full-size mill. Uh, I shouldn't say full-size, but the the center fire version. That's excellent. Also, uh, you get a folding stock. That's kind of in ergonomics. I may talk about that. Yeah, in ergonomics. Uh, and some other things like a threaded barrel with an included flash suppressor. Okay, I think that's added value when you're talking about a tactical 22. I love the shape of it too. Very A2 birdcage like off an M4. No problems there. And by the way, that is standard half inch by 28 threading. So if you want to throw on a suppressor, you can do it with your 522. And yes, it's reliable with a suppressor on from all reports. Jim Tech, AWC, AWC, YHM, whichever one you choose, Tactical Solutions. Lots of good 22 suppressors out there. Awesome. Value is good for what it is. And uh, when we talk about quality, I'll say it now, like the receiver on the 522 is milled out of 7075 T6 billet. 
It is not polymer like some other designs. The Smith & Wesson 1522 is a 100% polymer lower and upper receiver. Not so with the SIG, dudes. So if you have issues with that, um, you might want to consider the 522. I've got to kind of turn upside down because of my orientation. So this is all aluminum. And then the lower on the 522 is polymer. I think they went with the upper as aluminum for rigidity, which speaks to its reliability. We'll talk about here in a second. But good qualities uh, of materials throughout the gun. Of course, you have a polymer, classic SIG handguard. It's not too fat, it's trim. I love that, it's excellent. Uh, and then the quality, I'll say this now, on the buttstock can be improved. I told Eric this in my SIG Sour booth review. Um, this is a an extendable stock, different positions. I am somewhat disappointed how far it comes out, which is saying not much at all. You're looking at it. That is a sum total of your extension. It's 35.1 inches. I'm talking the gun overall. Uh, overall length 35.1 and it's 33.6 inches collapse so you can see that's not a big difference I would like it to come out another notch as usual it seems like SIG is still adhering to the very short length European uh, length of pull on some of their guns to include this one the good news is this though and I'll say it now uh, I'm kind of jumping ahead to ergos I know that I always do that um, you have two different lengths of our widths of butt pads that you can put on and that is nice. They're both included. I have the longest one on and that does a lot to cure the length of pull problems. In fact, it'll totally cure it for most people. Um, but getting to the quality of the stock, it does wiggle a little bit. Listen, there is a little bit of movement. That is on par, to be honest, with a lot of other designs, including some Tapco stocks, even Magpul. You know, the, the CTR stock will wiggle a little bit. Uh, in shooting, I thought it'd be a bigger, di uh, you know, a bigger deal. I didn't really notice it in my tactical shooting. I didn't at all. It's only when I'm sitting here holding the gun, you know, for tabletop purposes and study. Uh, I told uh, Sig, I didn't, you know, I said, hey, can you like increase the dimension of that arm inside and maybe tighten up that dimension so it's tighter? So hopefully in future 522s, I'll do that, and it really is rigid. There really isn't a reason why it should have that amount of wiggle. It does lock solidly. There is no movement back and forth. And while we're here, it also folds. So you depress that very strong latch and plunger. I think it's an excellent design. Look at the strength of that in the 522. That's milled steel, and then when it locks up, it's locking against a steel tab inside that portion there. When it folds on the side, and I'm not going to do it, this is kind of a little hokey thing, uh, you really have to smack it to get the retention tab in the side of the stock to hold. There's a retention tab right there. It will mate right here, and you really got to smack it in, but then when you pull out the stock again, this pulls out with it. I might as well demo that now. Let me see. Okay, there you go. See how I smacked it? Uh, once it's uh, folded, though, that's a very trim and compact package if you're backpacking with it. Uh, 522 can come along. Okay, and like I was talking about, see how hard that is? I gotta take it off camera here. Okay, cool, it didn't do it that time. Sometimes when I pulled that stock out, that little retention tab stays right here. They could do a better job of making this retain within the stock. Uh, also, and I mentioned this to Von Bossi as well, the rep, this little screw which retains the extendable butt pad is weak because I myself, uh, this gun on loan in the Nut and Fancy Project, sorry dude, stripped it out when I was screwing it in. I was being careful and it's hard to line up and so that little screw strips out. They need to improve that and make it more bomb proof. Okay, so that's kind of a little aside on the stock, but value again, that's where we left off, is excellent for what it is considering the other alternatives which are usually more expensive than this one. Size and weight, talking point. I said it could be a backpack rifle. No joke, it can. Naked, that is without optics, no sling, 6.4 pounds empty. There are lighter designs. One of them is the amazingly light, I think it's like four and a half pounds, Kel-Tec SU-22. Also a fine tactical 22 alternative. I am equally enthusiastic about this design. Um, and it is just svelte. I mean, very lightweight. Won't compact to the size of the 522, but it is lighter. 
The 522, though, uh, definitely lightweight. Everybody who shot it in the Nut and Fancy project said as much. They go, wow, that thing is so light. As it is configured, it is wearing a Alpha 30 by Adco Red Dot. That's a 3 MOA, uh, medium quality Red Dot sight. I've shown it to you on several other guns to include my Tapco Duracoated 1022 Special by Nut and Fancy. I think the Mini 14's wearing one. They won't break the bank. Around about 100 bucks available from Midway USA. Tell them we sent you. Um, and that is a great little uh, high value sight for that. But with the sight on top, and with a magazine, we'll talk about that magazine here in a sec, six pounds, 15 ounces, so just under seven pounds. And that's including that steel swivel, um, which we'll talk about too. So that decent weight. Um, and the size, very compactable with a folding stock. You won't gain much in overall length, once again, by retracting the stock, not so much. Uh, firepower. Why firepower on a tactical 1022, or a tactical 22? Because it speaks to one, getting back to the first POU, enjoyment. I think it's funner to shoot a lot and load less. Okay, just as a recreational firearm, I think it's beneficial for me to have a 30 round mag. This is a Black Dog, I think, what, 26, 27 round magazine. And that is another reason I am stoked on the 522. They chose not to go with a proprietary magazine design. Okay, that is huge, dudes. You've got to understand that. Um, Smith & Wesson, M&P 1522, the Colt Tactical 22 AR-15, they don't do that. They use proprietary magazines. I think that was probably a bad move. Um, there's probably reasons why they went with that, I understand. They are easier to load, those other magazines, because they have a slot running down the middle of them, and they also have like a thumb lever, which you can depress the spring with and really slam those cartridges on. Uh, are in there fast. The downside of that um, is that I don't think the magazine over time will be quite as reliable. It is also open to debris and dirt. Like we learned with the CMMG conversion, you'll see that in annotation. Um, the Black Dog magazines function best when you keep them clean, and I think all 22 magazines will function best when you keep them clean. Dumping them in the dirt, get them all covered with dirt and dust, especially on the innards, I think would just be problematic. The Black Dog, as proven by my many thousands of rounds sent down range, this is a Brownells variety one, um, just outstanding, outstanding. One is included with a 522. It is an integral part of the system, and it is another reason that this gun is so reliable. So firepower, what, 27 rounds? Excellent. Do I need more than that? Nah, not in this POU. It's more than enough. Oh, and by the way, these magazines, since they're not proprietary, if you already have a CMMG conversion, kind of like this one on the table hiding in the background, this is a bushy with a CMMG regular, not stainless steel polished conversion, which has been pretty much 100% reliable since break-in, using CCI, CCI mini mags at least. Um, it fits that gun too, so you don't have to go out and buy a whole new set of magazines. You see where I'm going with that? Use an established magazine design. We see the same approach um, from LaRue. You know, when they designed their OBR, formerly called the OSR, it's a 762 by 51 battle rifle. You know, they went with an established magazine design, the SR25 DPMS LR308 mag. Good job. Same concept in play here, dudes. Use something that's proven. Uh, and this magazine is excellent. Again, just a little bit of hassle to load it. SIG 522, next talking point. Accuracy. How is it? I will say excellent, maybe not outstanding. Outstanding in my book is pretty much a one hole group. You'll have to have a target rifle to achieve that. There's lots of 22 bolt guns that can do it. Some varieties of 1022s can do it. Maybe some Marlins like the 795. Uh, and other guns uh, amazingly can shoot that well. I don't know if the 522 is quite capable of that accuracy. Um, but I've been pretty happy with it. Uh, I don't have the paper target here, so I'm going to roll in a picture. There's my 50-yard target shooting this SIG 522 with a variety of ammunition at the 50-yard line. Uh, and I can tell you that I was pretty pleased. A couple flyers here. The group maybe should have been around an inch, inch and a half if I was, I don't know, doing my part, the gun was like supremely accurate. But keep in mind, that's with no magnification, three MOA red dot in wintertime, wind blowing. Um, so I'm actually pretty pleased with that. 
Uh, most reports of what I've heard and heard from, let me say, credible sources that I trust is you might be able to get a one inch group at 50 yards with your SIG 522 magnified optics. You're going to be hard pressed, by the way, to do that with a red dot sight, probably one inch. But that is, you know, maximum accuracy. In reality, the practical accuracy you're going to be able to achieve with this gun is outstanding. Um, as, we, as we again demonstrated indoor range there at Impact Guns, you know, Sterling shot it. Very happy with the results. Uh, you know, even semi rapid fire, it's basically blowing one hole there at 15 yards, opening up a little bit as we push the target down to 25 yards. Uh, so, excellent. I I'm going to just say maybe one, one to two inch accuracy at 50 yards. That's what I'll call the 522. Um, and I'm going to jump ahead now uh, to this part, reliability. Okay, that's kind of near the end. I probably ought to juggle the order of those talking points because it is paramount when we're talking about a tactical 22 carbine like the 522. And this is where this gun shines. Okay, it cycles, listen, it cycles every round I put in it. Okay, it doesn't matter if it's cheap federal Walmart ammunition, you know, uh, Wildcat, Remington, CCI mini mags, 100%. To me, that is astounding performance from a, t a 22 tactical carbine. It speaks to exactly exactly what Eric Von Bossi said in the Sig Sauer 2010 Shot Show video, uh, that the engineers really spent a lot of time on this gun to make sure it would do just that, that it would be a reliable 22 that could function on a variety of impulse energies uh, from different ammunition. It's the first tactical 22 that I've ever seen do that. And actually, probably the first semi-automatic 22 rifle, period. Did you hear that? Period, that I've seen do it. I've had jams from Ruger 10 22s as well. Yeah, that's right, especially with extended magazines, even quality extended magazines like Tactical Innovations, Butler Creek Steel Lips, I've said that in review. The 522 feeds everything, and that is widely reported by everyone who has shot it. Does it feed the 60 grain Aguilas? I don't know, I didn't shoot those. Some guys are really hip on that round. I don't know. It has a one in 16 uh, barrel twist rate. Uh, for those guys one, wanting to know, it's very similar to the other tactical offerings. I think the M&P 1522 has the same twist rate by Smith & Wesson, uh, but supremely reliable. And that speaks, again, going back in the talking points to value because the value is extremely high when you can go out and buy cheap ammo and you don't have to pay a premium price per, for perhaps CCI mini mags, which may or may not be available where you're at anyhow, right? Cool, that is a huge selling point on that. Uh, oh, one thing I forgot to tell you, you guys probably noticed, there's no sights included on the 522. That's because they want to save money. Can you put sights on there? Yes, I think they have them available. You can buy them separately. You can also buy, speaking of accessories, and I don't have them on this gun right now, the SIG rails, which I highly recommend so you can attach your tactical light to. Maybe if you want to run a vertical grip, you can put them on the bottom as well. They do sell a kit. It's about $20, usually sold out because the gun is selling so well, as are the accessories. Be patient, though. They'll probably come back, and I definitely recommend you get that. And actually, SIG, I think you should just include it, okay? If you watch this vid, throw that in there, man. It's only 20 bucks. Give your guys extra value and they'll uh, be even more loyal to your brand, okay? So that's just an aside. Extremely reliable. Accuracy, I said, was outstanding. We we're talking about ergonomics. I love the pistol grip. No problems there. It's comfortable. I love that SIG pistol grip. The trigger, a lot of guys will wonder, how is the trigger on the 522? From nothing fancy, from all the rounds that I've shot, and it's been several thousand before I've done this tabletop. Did you hear that? I've shot several thousands of rounds through this just to make sure. Some of it was just reliability testing because I really wasn't believing what I was seeing. Throwing that federal Walmart ammo in there and just chunk, 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 you know, shooting like four mag dumps at a time and then letting the gun cool down. No jams. It just blows my mind. The trigger is excellent. It's kind of double action like, like a lot of tactical 22s are uh, along the lines of the GSG-9 perhaps, but it is much better. It has a crisp and light let off. 
Uh, maybe I'll roll some footage in about guys talking about that, TMP crew members. They loved it too. It lends itself to shooting the gun very accurately. I wouldn't change anything about the SIG 522 trigger. That's saying a lot because I'm kind of picky when it comes to my triggers, especially my 1022s. I'll do mods, I'll improve them because uh, I think it makes a gun fa uh, fire quicker. That's another reason I like a nice trigger and more accurately. Uh, other ergos, we've talked about the stock already. I like how your, your cheek lines up so nicely with a very good cheek weld on the 522 when you're using a low mounted optic just like this ADCO that you're seeing here. Okay, so it's very ergonomic, it's low. The Picatinny rail adheres to 1913 standards, no problem there, and it's made of aluminum, not polymer. So over the years, as you're attaching, unattaching optics, it's probably going to be a more durable alternative than perhaps a polymer receiver. Um, you know, I really don't know because I haven't had a polymer receiver 22 and using it. I have some other friends that do. You're going to see them rolled in front of the camera, probably tested in the Nut and Fancy Project. We'll talk to that then. But if I'm given a choice, especially with the still lightweight of the 522, I will take a 7075 aluminum milled receiver any day of the week if given a choice. Um, so good ergos on the stock. Length of pull is adjustable. We talked about that. No sights to speak of. You're going to have to supply those. Um, now, nothing fancy. Would you buy the iron sights? No, I wouldn't. Not for the POU of this gun. If you're going to use it for some type of, I don't know, defensive role, I really couldn't see how, but maybe you would. I might want to have a backup iron sight option, but as a tactical 22 training tool recreational uh, gun, no. I'm just going to run my optic and call it good. Save some money there. The operation is pretty cool too when we talk about uh, ergos because as you can see, it has a last shot bolt hold open using that Black Dock magazine. Excellent. Okay, and by the way, there's your magazine release here. I got so much stuff in the way, pardon me. Let me take the mag out and I'll show you the controls on the 522. Okay, so this, if you're a lefty, that's another huge selling point for the 522. The safety catch, both sides. Notice it's not a 90 degree throw. Something less to go up to the fire position. I like that, you can actuate it either side, left or right. There's your magazine release for the lefties and for the righties. It's right here. It works in the same way. Just to press it. Fully ambi. I like that. There's a bolt hold open. Right now it's actuated to hold that bolt in the rearward position. And then you just release it, pull the bolt back. Off it goes. Wicked. Love it. By the way, look at the bolt handle on that. Rubber covered. It's pretty extended. That's generally what you'll try to achieve. That type of ergonomic on a 1022 with an aftermarket bolt release. Isn't it true? But it comes standard with a 522, another huge ergonomic selling point. AK users, if you're used to coming off offhand to charge your gun, the 522 is a good training tool because it works the same way. Yeah, I know the magazine is different, so is the safety, but the charging thing is pretty similar to what you're already doing. Same with you, you guys, uh, you M1A and M4, Mini 14 guys as well. Love those. Um, good ergos on all the things that they put together here. Okay, ergonomics, this is probably included too, and that is how do you set a sling up on this tactical 22 carbine? My philosophy, philosophy for a tactical 22 is that it should have a light provision. I already discussed that on the railing that's not here yet. And it should also have a single point sling provision and probably a night shooting capability, which this gun is wearing via the ADCO sight and the front mounted light, which is forthcoming. Single point though, they have a stud there that you can tie into. I think that is just fine. Some guys would want to see the flush mounted swivel system. I actually like it the way it is because I think it's lighter weight. All those flush mounted swivels are heavy. Probably all, some almost push two ounces for the swivel itself. One thing though, uh, you might want to take this screw out, screw out, degrease it and Loctite it because I found in our shooting it backs out. You can see this. I left it like that because it's par partially unscrewed. You need to Loctite it. Um, if you want to run a two-point sling, you have that provision as well. Through a tie-in, you'll probably have to use a hook on the front end, and then you're ready for the two-point sling system as well. And we talked about the stock folding mechanism. No problems there. Love it. Versatility. We talked about that in POU. That's generally what POU means. Accessories. Uh, you might need to buy more magazines, okay? But the good news is Black Dog magazines aren't that expensive. You can find them in lots of different places. 
Um, and again, it's probably one of the best magazines out there currently for a tactical 22. Field strip and maintenance. Simple, simple, simple. Let's do it. Uh, the magazine is out. Safety check, visual. Yep, nothing in there. Safe direction. There's your takedown pin right there. Hopefully I won't screw this up. Push it out. By the way, I did notice in our firing that that would back out just a little bit. Sig, if you're watching, make that a little bit harder to push out. You know, tighten the tolerance on that. Shouldn't be that quite, because I'd look down and the pin would be like this. Okay, minor annoyance, yes. Grab that, tilt it up, and it breaks open just like an AR-15. And probably it's Big Brother the 556. Uh, and then you get in, you can see the engineering that took place on the 522 to make it so durable. This gun's still dirty though. Um, you pull out the bolt like ish, and then here's your charging handle. Just slide it out gently, wiggle it, and out comes your bolt. Like that. Polished steel, and then it rides nicely within that milled 7000 series aluminum receiver. See that down there? They spent some time thinking about this gun. That's why it is so reliable. It's not slinging around there. You don't get any asymmetric um, push forces on the bolt. That seems to be apparent just in the reliability. Uh, and whatever recoil spring mechanism they have, it works fine. But there's your breakdown. That's it. Get in there, clean your receiver, clean your barrel from you know this end here. Clean your bolt up, re-lube it. I recommend maybe Militech, Slip 2000, Break Free. All of those will work. And yes, I recommend keeping it clean. I'm not a real good example here because I've been testing it. Uh, and then it goes together just as easily. Let me pause the camera with the gun back together. We'll resume. Gun's not quite back together yet because I wanted to show you how easy it is to assemble. Just put your charging handle back into the bolt. There's a milled groove, i.e. slot in the bolt there. It inserts readily. No problems with aligning it, finding where it's at, like some other designs. Push your bolt all the way in so it's flush. Make sure your push pin is still extracted from the lower receiver. Upper receiver, lower receiver come together. Push pin back in just like an AR-15. Bam! You're done. A-plus on the field strip SIG 522. Uh, the maintenance and cleaning on this gun I will say is perhaps easier than some other tactical 22s I've worked with. It's just easy. Pop everything open, it comes apart, there's no alignment issues, it's fast. A uh, little bit faster the cleaning I'm talking and the lubrication than perhaps an AR-15 equipped with a CMMG or Spikes tactical conversion. That's still pretty easy. I mean it just pops open with a push pin just like that. But all the innards really have to be taken apart of the bolt group. Uh, the 22 bolt group I'm talking about, relubed and sometimes it will stick in the chamber as well. And getting it out of that chamber insert out of the gun can be problematic. You have to tap it with a rod. 522, the 522 is just simple, simple, simple in field strip. Um, durability. Did I talk about that yet? If not, here it comes. It's a new design. Time will tell. Uh, but in the many rounds I fired downrange in the SIG 522, all indications point up. The receiver, the bolt of this gun is very well designed. It wouldn't be reliable as it is if it wasn't. To me, that indicates high uh, reliability and durability. Uh, there are a few minor issues like that little retention screw for the stock extension. You know, the butt pad extension, that needs to be strengthened a little bit. Maybe retaining the single point sling a little bit better. Tightening the tolerances on the push pin so it doesn't extract while firing like that. Maybe they, they could do that, but overall the gun is pretty squared away and I talked about the slight rattle, very slight rattle in the stock, but a squared away gun. I think it's going to be very reliable over time. I think it will turn out to be one of the most favorite tactical 22 carbines uh, made. That's right, I really do. And I think manufacturers will be struggling to catch up with the reliability that the 522 has achieved. And that is, to me, one of its strongest selling points. Being able to cycle all types of 22 rounds without problems, without malfunction. Great job, SIG. But it gets better, too. It is just a fun gun to shoot. And that, again, is a primary POU on this gun. Recreational firearm. And it's fun when our gun's reliable and it's not jamming all the time. You know, if it's jamming all the time and we can't get it reliable, uh, let me talk for myself. I get rid of it. That's not a fun gun. I just pitch it, sell it, it's gone. Uh, that's not the 522. It looks cool. 
just like I said at the opening of the video, it looks outstanding. It's impressive in, in looks when you run it off a single point sling. You know, once you equip it with your tactical light, you have your red dot or scope of choice on it. You guys are going to dig it. I'll tell you this right now. You are going to dig it. It's going to, you know, give you tons of enjoyment as a user. SIG 522, one of the best, that's right, the best tactical uh, 22 rifles uh, as of 2010, at least the early part of 2010. I think it's worth the money. You're going to find uh, it's going to be hard to find. It is popular and may become more so perhaps after this nut and fancy review, but uh, it's worth it. Search it out, get it, shoot it, go out and make some memories. This is Nut and Fancy Tabletop Review, SIG 522. I'm going to leave you with some more shooting video of this awesome little gun. See ya. Sterling Impact Guns, one of my friends to help me shoot, test guns. We're going to test the SIG 522. I've done some accuracy testing with it, reliability testing. I come away very impressed. Your turn, Sterling. I think I have it zeroed for 25 yards, my friend. So it might shoot a little bit off of that red, uh, that orange dot we have down there. one with the hold open. Cool, huh? The CMMG conversions do it too, I think. Which dot were you shooting at? The small or the big one? Nice. Got off a little bit. That's I was aiming here. But Real good. And rapid fire too. Yeah, that had, there was very little duration in between presses. SIG 522, that's an accurate, reliable tactical 22. Actually, at this point, one of my favorites. Fun shooter. Take it all the way down and shoot that big dot. That'll work. I like it. That was pretty much rapid fire too. Yeah. Semi rapid. Yeah, good speed. What do you think of the trigger, Sterling? Really good trigger on it. It does, doesn't it? Yeah. Very light, kind of double actiony in feel, long take, but really crisp let off. Really, I yeah. I actually, it's really nice trigger on it. It's very easy to shoot. Yeah. And very, like I say, very reliable. Twenty five rounds again, no, no hiccups. That's probably about the number four hundred rounds that that's gone through. Different ammo types, and I'm using CCI, but it shoots the cheapo crap, a hundred percent. Ghost of pain with a Sig five twenty two, starting a run and gun. Ready? Hit it. Let's do it. Light him up. Nice. Slow down, there you go. You're owning that thing. Hit that far target. Nice. Good job. Uh, how do I release my mag on here? Oh, there we go. Hit it. Yeah, whale on that thing. Nice. All right, turn. Nice. I'm empty. Empty. Not a single jam. Nope. Not one jam. With promotional cheapo federal ammo. <clears throat> First time ever running it. 
did pretty all right with it. Dude, you were connecting like every shot. Yeah, I threw I threw a few out there, but yeah. I started missing them from the, from this position on that target because I, I tried to speed up because I started drilling them and I speed up too much and then so I slowed down and I got back on. You did great, dude. Yeah, things runs awesome. Isn't that a sweet gun? I'm gonna have to pick one up. I love that. That's that cool. is one of my favorite tactical 22 cool. rifles out there. I love the ergonomics. You can adjust your length of pull on the stock. Great big rubber cover charging handle. Right. I love that reaching across me on yeah. the charge like that. Good safety. I love the barrel, the flash suppressor right. on it. And uh, more importantly, it doesn't jam. It doesn't. No, that thing ran really, really well. I'm very impressed. You put that on vibrate, Holmes. <clears throat> Heckles, Dr. Heckles, taking his phone calls. Very Drug cool. deal? Drug deal. Cool. I like it. Mark said go. Wailing on it. Nice. Bad guy behind you. Woo! Good times. Nice. You dominated <laughs> that thing, dude. Yeah, that was a really good one that time. Very that nice. Felt good. Nicely done, my man. Good shoot. Killer shooting. Oh, man. You're Love ripping that thing up. Look at my couch. Love that charger. Oh yeah, that's so cool. I wish my air had that. Fantastic shooting. Thanks, dude. You can definitely tell that's your rig. You know how to run it. Sig 522, I love it. Awesome. Actually on loan in the Nothing Fancy project. Awesome gun. I'll be getting one, though. I awesome will be getting gun. one of these. Very, Thanks very cool. Very cool. My new favorite 22. Sig. Excellent, bro.